Welcome to the February 15th, 2024 Northampton City Council meeting. I'm Alex Jarrett, and as City Council President, I'll be presiding this evening, uh, along with Vice President Rachel Maori. This meeting and all participating in person and on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. I now call the City Council to order. Laura, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Councilor Dodd. Mike. Here. Um, Councillor Elkins. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Mayori. Here. Councillor Moulton. Here. Councillor Pastrich Clemmer. Here. Councillor Perry. Here. And Councillor Rothenberg. Here. Council President, you have a quorum. Thank you. So tonight's highlights include uh, appointment confirmations, including for the auditor, um, well, warrant for the March 5th, 2024 presidential primary election, and three ordinances about stop signs and parking. Um, so councilors have received many emails today uh, about voting on a resolution about a ceasefire in Gaza tonight. So that resolution is not on tonight's agenda. I've consulted our city solicitor, uh, Alan Seewald, and it would not qualify as an emergency measure. So we can't discuss or vote on it tonight. However, uh, pub Peace public, fire public, now. Peace public Peace comment resolution now. Yeah. is the blood is on our hands. So there, there will be time for public comment. We are funding this war. We are funding this war with our money. Emergency. 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 If you're having trouble raising your virtual hand, you can turn on your video and physically raise your hand. If you want to submit a written public comment, please email it to citycouncil at northamptonma.gov, and it will be sent to all counselors and will be part of the public record. So I'm going to alternate between people in the room and people on Zoom. And before you begin, please state your name and your city or town for the public record. Uh, to ensure everyone has an equal opportunity to speak, the council limits comments to a maximum of two minutes, and we have 90 minutes in total uh, available for public comment. After the two minutes, I will ask you to please finish your sentence. According to the council rules, we do not respond during public comment it is, as it is your time to speak. So while your comments should be directed to us, we aren't allowed to respond. Our rules also state that counselors and members of the public shall conduct themselves with civility and respect at all times. Your protected speech is a constitutional right and one that we ask you to wield with consideration and respect for all and with recognition that the public space that grants you that freedom is shared equally by everyone. You may speak on any topic. It doesn't need to be an item on the agenda. If you're on Zoom, I ask that all but the council turn off your video until called upon. Uh, it makes it much easier to see pe the people uh, who we, would, we need to call upon. And only the person recognized has the floor, and all comments are to be directed to the council. So we'll start with uh, people in the room. And the first person is Peter Kakos. You could state your name and city or town. Good evening, uh, counselors. Uh, my name is Peter Kakos, and I live on uh, Rocky Hill Road in Florence. <clears throat> Thank you for this time tonight. Thank you for your service to our city. And also want to applaud the resolution that was, uh, that has been brought, uh, that has been created by four council people with its emphasis on condemning all forms of hate. I honor that. <laughs> And, uh, and I thank you very, very much for that. We've seen that resolution's text. Uh, at the same time, we have put forth uh, uh, the Dubs resolution and in support of that. And the reason is, is because we are desperate. We are desperate because as we, as we sit and stand here and in our comfort of our warm homes and, and this warm, wonderful place of people of tolerance, there are people literally dying in the streets and, and uh, mal malnourished, uh, infectious diseases. Did you know there's over, over 1,100 children who have had amputations 
without anesthesia? Mm -hmm. Think about that as a grandparent or a parent. This is very urgent stuff. This isn't, this isn't just uh, a business as usual. We are, we are in a place where, and I think I speak for some, at least of our good people who've come here tonight, we're in a place where we can't rest our conscience. Yeah. Our conscience will not let us rest. Until, until, we've, until we've assured ourselves we've done all we possibly could to act as expeditiously as possible. And so I implore the council to uh, create something like a special meeting to consider the good resolution that the council has lifted up and the Dubs resolution, which, is, which we feel needs to be addressed and voted upon, joining 70 other cities in the Commonwealth and in New England. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next we'll go to Zoom, and the first person is Susan Tabarish. Susan, could you state your name and city or town? And are you able to unmute? I've asked you to unmute. Okay, we will uh, come back to you, Susan. And so we'll go to the next person on Zoom, uh, who is Ty Smart. Ty, your name and city or town? Hi, uh, my name is Ty Smart, uh, and I live in Northampton. Um, so I guess I want to start this by saying I'm a little confused on how you're defining emergency. Um, I would like that to be both more transparent on how emergency is defined. Um, you know, currently there are 1.4 million people in the southern city of Palestine and Rafa um, who are asked to move there uh, by this Israeli government um, uh, to quote unquote be safe. Uh, and while the United States was watching the Super Bowl of while a lot of people were, uh, which also had ads funded by the Israeli government. Um, the government's the Israeli government started bombing the refugees in Rafah, mm. uh, and uh, the place where they told them to go, right? Um, that uh, so I don't. I guess, again, I don't understand how emergency is being used here, defined, um, it, and like it's coming off like it's not an emergency for you, for the city council, um, because you're not there. You're not experiencing it. You haven't lost 30,000 people, right? Like 30,000 people, that's almost the size at UMass, right? Like. Imagine the entire student population at UMass just gone, killed, murdered, right? Um, why is this not an emergency? And I want that to be transparent, uh, at least at the next city council meeting, a response, if you can't respond now, understandable. Actually, no, not understandable because it is an emergency. Um, but I get that there are procedures that must be followed. That was time, um, so just if you could finish your sentence. Awesome, yeah. Um, I think it would be useful to also let people know when they have 30 seconds left. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next uh, in the room is Nick Mottern. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, Your name and city or town? My name is Nick Motter, and I live at 16 Strong Avenue in Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, I am a member of the National Board of Veterans for Peace, and I have visited Jerusalem and the West Bank. I've also been in war zones in Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Mozambique, and I have some understanding of 
what people are experiencing in Gaza right now, although anything I've seen doesn't even begin to approach what's going on. This is an atrocity of historic proportions. And what this gentleman said about an emergency is absolutely right. And I think what I'm going to say will help explain that. On December 21st, Reverend Peter Kakos and I came before you to ask that you draft a ceasefire resolution. At that time, 20,000 Gazans had been killed. Former councilwoman Jamila Gore was the only council member to have the courtesy to speak to us after we asked for this resolution. On January, in January, we came again to the council for a ceasefire resolution. No one spoke to us. On February 1st, we came to the council with a draft of a resolution. By that time, more than 27,000 Palestinians had been killed. After that meeting, council, council Dubs very graciously offered to support the resolution. And we are very grateful for him having the courage to do this in the face of the other council members who have chosen to let this be deferred until some later date, maybe March 7th, three weeks from now, maybe longer. There's no definite anything about this. Peter worked urgently to follow up and make sure that this resolution be put on the agenda for tonight. It was given in by the deadline on Tuesday with one sponsor, and it was knocked off the agenda by the city council president. And I think that the city council president really should explain to, to people why that happened. And I will say also that what we want is immediate consideration and a vote, positive vote on this. And if, you, and if your legal counsel has that a weird interpretation of an emergency time. after all we've done to bring this forward to you, then maybe that's what lawyers are for sometimes. But in, in this particular case, we would like to have a special council meeting immediately tomorrow, Saturday, if you don't feel like you can do this tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Next we'll go to Zoom, Rick Colson. Okay. Hi. Hi, if uh, you could state your name and city or town. Yeah, I'm Rick Colson. I live on Laurel Street in uh, Northampton. Um, you know, I had a prepared comment to make tonight uh, that was uh, related to uh, the dealership, uh, auto dealership on King Street, and um, it, uh, it, it, uh, and, and my stance against that, and my primary concern about ignoring the Northampton Comprehensive Plan. Uh, that uh, the city had invested so much time and energy in developing and is obviously ignoring uh, in terms of um, the car dealership uh, on North King Street. But I'm going to let that conversation for the moment go because um, I agree so strongly with the sentiments that have been presented so far, uh, probably even more strongly. And um, I, I think that um, uh, to rely on what the, your lawyer says is an emergency or not is uh, an abrogation of your own personal responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it's offensive uh, that, uh, that uh, this issue is not being taken up. I, I will relegate any time that I have left to uh, someone else. Thank you. <laughs> Next in the room is Jim Nash. Hello, my name is Jim Nash of 18 Montview here in Northampton. And um, Sam Hopper and I are running for Demo Democratic State Committee. Um, I am running as the man candidate and Sam is running as the woman. Uh, this will be uh, on the, uh, the primary ballot on March 5th. Um, we're asking you to write our names in. Uh, we are not on the ballot. Well, for Ward 3 voters, um, you will see me on the ballot for the Ward 3 committee, but you also need to write my name in as well if you would like me to serve as the state committee representative. Um, 
So um, I ask for your vote, and, um, and I appreciate that. The other thing is I'd like to announce that on um, February 26th at 7 p.m. at Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School, that's in on 80 Locust Street, um, the Northampton Democratic City Committee will be holding their caucus to uh, send delegates to the convention, uh, which is uh, later this spring. <laughs> and, in Worcester, and and that'll be a nominating convention. So you'll, there'll be um, lots of speeches and opportunities to meet candidates and um, and actually endorse candidates. So anyway, thank you for for your times, Councillor, and um, and thank you for your service. I know the work you guys are all doing right now, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, City Council. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Zoom, and uh, we have Jay. Jay, if you could state your name and city or town. Hello, uh, my name is Jay Smith, and I live at 95 Straw Avenue in Florence. Um, I am also here because I would like the city council to take action for um, an immediate action uh, to support a ceasefire resolution. Um, and I know that you're going to be hearing a lot and you know a lot about why uh, Northampton community thinks this is important. I want to speak particularly as a, a Jewish member of this community um, about what this means for me um, and, and our Jewish community here in Northampton. I am a member of Congregation B'nai Israel and also a member of the Ohel Minion, both of which are here in our beloved community. And um, for me, as a Jew, um, as a religious Jew, um, I take very seriously the Selim Elohim, that each of us as human beings are created in the divine image of God. Um, and I believe that with what is happening um, in Gaza and Palestine in the West Bank, um, that we are not listening to that very, very real um, sentiment and uh, and and value that we hold so dearly as a community. And so um, I urge all of us, uh, and especially the city council, to take um, immediate action to um, and to listen to not only all of us here in Northampton, but also especially our Jewish community here in Northampton, who are really, really urging you today to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next in the room, Maha Mushabek. <clears throat> Hi, counselors. Um, I am a Palestinian American. You could say your name and your city or town. Okay, uh, my name is Maha Mushabek. I am. I live in Florence, here. Um, I am a Palestinian American resident of Northampton and a business owner here in Northampton. Um, and I've come here today because I want to see a resolution for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Um, I grew up in the Pioneer Valley, and I can tell you that I did not feel safe as a Palestinian. Um, I have two children both born and living in Northampton, uh, and I want them to grow up knowing that the town of their birth would speak up for them if right. it was their lives on the line. Mm -hmm. yes. Woo. Yes. All right. I, I know that you're aware, other people have said, uh, more than 12,000 children have been killed and more bodies remain undiscovered. Children are starving and thirsty and cold. Um, I can't get the image of children shaking in terror out of my head. Uh, doctors in Gaza have talked about children that are dying of heart attacks right now. Oh. They are literally dying of the terror. Mm. I can't raise Palestinian children in a world where even my own town stands by while these war crimes are being committed. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm asking 
that we please issue an emergency ceasefire resolution to show that the town of Northampton believes that all children deserve safety. And, and to show my children that they are safe here. Thank you. Thank you. It's been, okay. So next on Zoom uh, is Renee Tiberg, but I think it's actually Susan. Yes. Uh, connectivity problems, but I am, I am back on another computer. Okay. Um, so why am I here? Your name and city or town? Susan Tiberg, Rural Road, Florence. What does it all mean? Tiberg, T H E B S U O Y E R G. Eight. So um, my father was um, in the um, Army Air Corps in World War II. His, uh, he was a Jewish uh, man in an airplane uh, that caught fire. He parachuted out, ended up in a Nazi prisoner of war camp mm. on a forced march, and several years later I was born. Mm. And I will tell you, in honor of my father and his life, and with every core of my being, I just can't think of anything more urgent than all of us stopping what we're doing and, and getting out on the streets. It's the only way we're gonna stop this massacre that we're all paying for. I mean, just right. taking it in, these are our dollars. And um, if anybody heard Democracy Now! this morning, um, there's a really solid analysis saying there's just not enough pressure on uh, President Biden, and it's really important for all of us in every city and town in this country to be, the resolutions are one thing, we need to be out on the streets, but the power of all of the resolutions that are, get, uh, that are getting passed can be one element of what has to be just like totally pri high priority action. There's nothing now that's more important. Listen, I work on climate change, and if this continues, I don't know how we're going to even be able to deal with climate change because of all the implications in the horror. Right. I implore you get out on the streets, show up tomorrow. There's a Diane. Let's just get out on the streets and do everything we can. And please, thank you, Jeremy. Um, thank you so much for your resolution. And um, thanks for everybody who showed up. It's really uh, it's good to see you all there. Thank you. Next in the room is Harrison Williams. Good evening, council members. My name is Harrison Williams. I live in Florence. I learned tonight that the council's vote on the Northampton ceasefire resolution has been deemed not appropriate for emergency voting. I am appalled. So I asked the ca council, are we so morally bankrupt so the loss of a child's life every nine minutes for 130 days is not enough to call for a ceasefire. Thank you. Mm, thank you. When, did it, when did calling for a ceasefire become a difficult thing to say? We are literally calling for people to stop killing each other. How is this controversial? When did it become a moment to pause and remain silent when the ICJ sees plausibility for genocide? When we have seen the decimation of 90% of buildings and homes, when we have seen the bombings of hospitals, churches, and mosques, when we have seen the illegal white phosphorus dropped on UN schools filled full of refugees, when we have seen 2,000 pound bombs dropped on refugee camps to kill one militant, when the water, the power, the medical, and food supplies have been shut down for over 130 days, starving and imprisoned population of over two million people. When will it be enough for you to speak up? Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Polling shows that 80% of Americans want a ceasefire. So when will you stand up and represent the people in your community? Mm. I demand a ceasefire resolution be discussed immediately. I demand that our voices be heard and represented. I demand a call for an immediate ceasefire. Free Palestine.
Thank you. Next uh, on Zoom is Gwen Nabad. Oh, uh, there you are. Yes. Oh. Your name and city or town? Sure. My name is Gwen Nabad, and I'm a resident in Northampton in Ward 1. I am here to um, support the utility pole easement for Grand Street. However, I'm also here to speak about um, Gaza and um, all of the horrible things that I've been hearing in the news and um, all of the um, discussions that I've seen with doctors who, American doctors who are going to Gaza and who are trying to work under nearly impossible um, conditions with not enough supplies, things like that. And so I would ask that our city supports a resolution um, for a ceasefire. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next in the room, Anne Fine. Good evening. My name is Anne Fine. I live in Ward 4 um, in Northampton. And as a resident of Ward 4, I commend my city councilor, Jeremy Dubbs, for submitting a resolution for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. I urge the city council to support this resolution and allow an emergency vote. The horror in Gaza is unimaginable and must stop. The Israeli government is waging war on a civilian population, and the number of deaths and casualties is horrific. The citizens of Gaza, those who are somehow surviving, are homeless, hungry, and traumatized. Close to 29,000 Gazans have been killed, and over 68,000 have been wounded. Many are children. The shameful thing for me is my government is funding and arming this attack and I say that the pipeline of destruction must stop. The October 7th attack by Hamas was terrible, but Israel has had far more than their eye for an eye. A moral line has been crossed, and we must cry out to stop this destruction of a people and their society. I had a long career as a nurse midwife, and I cannot imagine what it must be like for the doctors, midwives, and nurses working in this war zone. The reports of cesarean births done without anesthesia are barbaric, and I I can only imagine the outcome of babies born in tents or rubble or abandoned cars because hospitals have been destroyed in targeted bombings. How many photos and videos do we need to see of mothers and fathers holding their disfigured, traumatized children or those of children wandering with no remaining family? As a Jew, I cannot be silent. I fear that the current government of Israel will only fuel anti-Semitism throughout the world. I must speak out. I must speak out against governments that are committing war crimes, and I condemn actions that ignite hate for any ethnic, religious, or racial minority. Please, if you please, could finish your sentence. That's please, fine. please send a message to President Biden and all of our elected representatives that we must have a ceasefire now. Vote yes on this resolution. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next Camden. on Zoom is uh, Camden. Hello, I'm Camden Siegel. I live in Northampton, and, and I'm here to demand that the Northampton City Council immediately support the ceasefire resolution. I'm a parent and a Jew, and I grew up hearing stories of the Holocaust that's so closely near the exact situation in Gaza for the last 138 days. It's absolutely unacceptable that the U.S. government has supported this and funded this, what is clearly a genocide happening today. It's unacceptable to dismiss this as not an emergency. It has been an emergency for the 10th October 8th, October 7th even. It has been 
God. It, just the devastation and the terror and the loss of life is overwhelming and unacceptable. And after hearing so many today, the community is demanding that this be taken up. This is an important issue. This must be said. Free Palestine, thank you. Thank you. Next in the room is Jonathan Liebman. My name is Jonathan Liebman. I live in Ward 4 on Monroe Street. Um, I will keep my comments short. I'm speaking as a Jewish resident of Northampton, as a health care worker. Um, I'm speaking in support of the council immediately taking up the ceasefire resolution that's been in, uh, um, introduced by Councilmember Dobbs. We are asking the council to represent the people of Northampton in opposing the use of our tax dollars to support a war which is killing thousands of civilians, the majority of whom are women and children. A war which has displaced almost the entire population of Gaza and now threatens hundreds of thousands more with death from disease and starvation. A war which will not bring home the Israeli hostages held in Gaza, does not address the ongoing injustice of the dispossession of Palestinians and the occupation in Gaza and the West Bank, and a war which ensures that the violence will go on for generation after generation. There, are, there will be people in this community who claim this is not our business to address as a city council or as a town. Um, aside from the obvious moral um, uh, lack in that kind of sentiment, um, we have a uh, financial interest in this, that we are having difficult time funding our city services. We're talking about overrides. We talk about that year after year after year, and that is because a disproportionate amount of our money goes to fund the military. There's a direct relationship between spending money on the uh, that support for the Israeli uh, attack on Gaza and the lack of services here, and that must stop. Thank you. Thank you. Next on Zoom is Maddie Fisher. Hello, my name is Maddie Fisher. I'm a resident of Northampton. I live on Bridge Street. And I'm also here to make a call on the city council to support an immediate ceasefire in occupied Palestine by joining many other cities around the country in supporting a ceasefire resolution and allowing for an emergency vote. Like others have said, this is incredibly urgent, as there are 1.4 million people currently being carpet bombed with money from our tax dollars. So it is the least the city council can do to use your power to put pressure on the federal government to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. Palestine. Thank you. Let's do it. Thank you. Uh, next uh, is Mike Kirby. And uh, Mike has made uh, accommodations and uh, in advance and will be given four minutes. Hi. <coughs> Hi, my name is Mike Kirby. And I live at 20 Hampton Avenue, Northampton, Mass. I support practically everything that has been said tonight. That, um, and, but what I'm here to talk to you about briefly is the, um, is the matter of the old Baptist church. Um, I started to study the situation and, and the the um, material available through the website. Um, the building's been vacant for 30 years. That uh, vacant and unheated. And that all by itself tells you that there's going to be a problem with that building. Um, the There was a resolution two years ago that um, that that a, its approval uh, meant that we would buy the building for three point three million dollars, which is way over earlier estimates, um, and that that the building. According to to Wayne Fiden and the uh, planning department, 
had 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 the owner had put a major renovation in place in the building and it was in excellent condition. Now, <clears throat> if you get on the web and you look at the uh, due diligence section regarding the, the building, they'll show you many of the many of the houses, many of the rooms, and the, some of them may have been fixed up by the, because the, the building department has been working on the building. But at the same time, no sheetrock, nothing but raw, um, raw timbers. Um, and and we so essentially we spent a million dollars of the federal money and bought the building. Mm. Now the the only real okay. stopper of a question stopper of a thing me is if it, the building is in excellent shape and has been completely renovated. How come it's still empty? It's been two years it's been sitting there. And in fact, in fact, if you, if you walk around it, there's, there's rebar showing, there's, there's, uh, it's, there's, there's blocked off entrances. In other words, there needs to be some due diligence and to to re to look at this fresh um, and so thank you very much for listening I appreciate it I appreciate the work that everybody is doing thank you thank you next on zoom is Kelly Juno My name is Kelly Juno, and I'm an East Hampton resident. Um, but I'm actually speaking today more as a teacher, and I teach in Northampton. Um, I teach elementary school. And I am speaking in support of the ceasefire resolution, not only on behalf of, not only because of the suffering that has been described so eloquently here, but also because I can't in good conscience do my job as a teacher when I know the world that I'm preparing my students for. And I feel like I'm lying when I prepare my students to enter into a world where it is completely acceptable to commit a genocide live where the whole world is watching and there are not actions taken to stop it. And what I feel very clear about is that the US government is showing that this is what they feel free to do to anyone. Thank you. Yeah. Not just Palestine. Um, you know, there's been, I think it's no secret, there's a lot of talk about kids struggling in school um, right now and how difficult it's been since the pandemic. Um, there's a lot of talk about social emotional learning and how the difficulties are because of the pandemic. Um, and really by that, I think that the kids understand the world that they're entering into. I think that they're angry, and I am angry on their behalf. Um, I think that they can see where resources are going, and I think that they can see how people are treated. And so on behalf of all of the children that I teach, and it, with a dream of a better world for them, I urge you to vote on a ceasefire resolution. Free Palestine. Thank you. Next in the room is Mayor Berger. Hi, Mayor Berger. I live in 20 Cedar Street. Um, I'm a Jewish resident in Northampton, and I'm so angry that this resolution has been delayed 
three weeks means thousands more killed. Thousands. <sighs> three weeks means people might starve to death. People are already, already starving to death. This is so dire. This is an absolute emergency, and we can't just ignore it anymore. We can't. This has to be our absolute focus. The resolution that you originally wrote was so disappointing, and I urge you to vote for, for Dub's resolution. Please don't dilute the ceasefire resolution by also talking about other things. This, the emergency is that 30,000 Gazans have been killed. 12,000 children. I'm a teacher, and whenever I see my students, I can't help but think it could just be them. They could just be killed. Five-year-olds, four-year-olds, three -year infants are being killed every day. It's horrifying. I have never witnessed such violence in my life, and I'm not even there. I'm not even seeing the extent of what is happening. So I urge you to vote for Dub's resolution, and also we have a petition signed from Jewish residents in Northampton. We put this together in three days and 105 people signed in three days. So people are still signing. There's so many more Jewish residents that support this, but I'll pass this out so you can see how many we were able to get in just three days. Um, yeah, ceasefire now, free Palestine. Thank you. Uh, next on Zoom is Connell. Oh. Hello. Um, I can't turn my video on for some reason. Um, but uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, Connell, Petty, H E A D Y, um, in Ward 2 in Northampton on Elm Street. Um, oh, there we go. Zoom. Um, yeah, uh, I'm a Northampton resident, um, and yeah, calling in to say, um, yeah, the, I'm very much in support of the resolution from Councillor Dobbs. Um, this is there's a, a genocide and ethnic cleansing being carried out with our tax dollars, with the support of our government. Um, we can't wait until there's you know nobody left to say, oh, you know. We all knew it was wrong, but what could we do? No, like we can do something right now. We can stand up and say, right. you know, this cannot be done in our name. Um, my, I mean, my moral code is no votes for genocide. That extends, you know, every every uh, office. Uh, next time around, um, we have to stand up and say, like, do not do this. Um, we we have to stop providing arms and money. Um, privilege. For you know, children, for children to be killed and put in plastic bags. Um, so, uh, yeah, please, uh, this is an emergency. Please uh, take up uh, the Jeremy Dubs uh, resolution and please vote yes. Thank you. And free, uh, a ceasefire is the start, not the end. Free Palestine. Thank you. Next uh, in the room is Luke Rotella. White privilege hypocrites. Hi. I'm Luke Rotello, co-chair of the Communist Party USA in Western Massachusetts. I live at 39 Hinckley Street in Northampton, and I'm here to echo these calls in support of an immediate ceasefire resolution. I'm also here to speak to, on a series of events which have transpired out of the public eye regarding the mayoral appointment of Calla Fisher to the position of town auditor. The mayor's nominee for town auditor is, to put it lightly, not a qualified figure. She lacks the most basic prerequisite degree, a bachelor's in accounting, and experience handling fiscal affairs outside of the small town of Athol. That she, is, um, that she, out of anyone, has been nominated to this position is at best puzzling. But her lack of qualification is not the crux of this issue. I'm saying all of this because Calla Fisher is a fascist. She has a history of showing support for MAGA political figures such as Marjorie Taylor Greene. And what's more, she's used her position on the Athol Select Board to vote against a measure to, take, to make the town a sanctuary city. This appointment, 
a grotesque product of backroom politicking, has been carried out behind our backs, with her nomination having already been endorsed by the committee, by committee with no public involvement. In the coming weeks, the council will consider the merits of a resolution condemning anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. How are we to take this in good faith when a pernicious opponent of our most vulnerable, someone whose politics is an affront to those of all marginalized faiths, faiths and identities, is being pushed without the most basic public knowledge? Does this reflect the democratic values that we purportedly hold? I urge you to stop the nomination of Cala Fisher for town auditor and my peers here to continue to keep their eyes on the workings of this political space in the name of peace, democracy, and anti-fascism. And let me repeat, if you're sick of hearing it good, cease fire now. <laughs> Thank you. Next uh, on Zoom is Emma. Hi, um, my name is Emma Ryan. I'm a resident of Northampton. I live in Prospect Street. And I, I came here not necessarily only to talk about the ceasefire resolution, but I'm going to focus on that. Um, and I want to thank everyone who has already spoken on behalf of the urgency of passing a ceasefire resolution and echo them and expressing frustration at the lack of emergency consideration because thousands of people are being killed and it is preventable and mass death is always an emergency and we cannot look away from mass death and we cannot continue to live in a community which looks away from mass death and and um, has at its core um, a, a blind eye towards militarism and um, genocide. And I say continue because our town is home to L3 Harris, which is a weapons manufacturer that directly supplies weapons to the Israeli military. So in addition to um, moving forward with an emergency hearing and voting for the passage of a ceasefire resolution, I would urge everyone in our town to consider our um, connection with uh, a war profiteer and genocide um, weapon re-manufacturer L3 Harris, which is in our backyard. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is in the room is Annie Wood. Hey, y'all. Um, so my name is Annie Wood. Um, I am a resident of Ward 4, um, and I'm a member of the Democratic Socialists of America, and I am here to implore you to pass Councillor Dobbs' resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza at the soonest possible city council meeting. The death toll in Gaza, as someone said before, is 30,000 right now. That is the equivalent of wiping out the entire town of Northampton. Um, and Israel is committing this massacre on the dime of the United States government and all of us have a responsibility to stand up to it. Like every empire before it, the US has shown that it has no conscience to appeal to. It's an oligarchy that insulates itself from democracy using institutions like the Senate, the Supreme Court, gerrymandering, etc. But what the US does respond to is resistance. Our willingness to show that our hearts are not with Biden or Trump, but with the people of Palestine and with oppressed people all across the world. As your constituents, we are asking you to stand with us and support a ceasefire as soon as possible. And we are going to keep asking you day and night until you do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on Zoom is Rhea Kogan. Are you able to unmute? Oh, sorry, I, I couldn't turn on my uh, video. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Yeah, your um, name, so actually city, my, or town? Yeah, my name is actually Addie Kogan, um, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to change the Zoom name uh, for my wife's name. Um, I am a Northampton resident. I live on Eight Liberty Street, and I am joining the chorus with everyone else um, for Northampton to pass the ceasefire resolution. Um, I, I really believe that this 
this massacre, this genocide will be looked back on and um, we want Northampton to show that we stood with the people of Gaza and we stood with any people who were um, experiencing such a massacre. Um, we, we have to live in a world where there's any kind of moral clarity um, if, if we want to have any order in the world, if we want um, to, to move forward as a species, uh, this comes down to that too. Are, are we just going to bomb each other? Are we going to um, put our energy towards climate crisis and, and the things that really matter for us to move forward as a human species? Um, so thank you for everyone who's spoken. And ceasefire now, I believe there will be a free Palestine. It just shouldn't have to take this long. Thank you. Next in the room is Claudia Lefko. <clears throat> Claudia Lefko, 40 Valley Street. I'm speaking to the emergency. Wars, Howard Zinn said, are always wars against children. Children suffer in numbers, unbelievable numbers. Israel's war in Gaza proves the point. Approximately 40% of victims in this war have been children, 12,000 dead children in four months. I want you to imagine the number 12,000. If I were to just start counting now from 1 to 12,000 by the second, it would take me three and a half hours just to say the numbers, not the names. 12,000 children would need 166 school buses. Imagine 166 empty school buses, bumper to bumper, the line would stretch from the Academy of Music to Sheldon Field. Imagine a chair for each child. Chairs would stretch for 2.84 miles, set up at the Academy of Music, and it would go just beyond the Esalen Cafe. 12,000 is the approximate number of deaths that would result in the crash of five Airbus A380 planes, the largest commercial passenger aircraft we have. We need a permanent ceasefire now. It's an emergency. And even if you cannot have an emergency meeting, there is someone in the room who I call on to speak out on this, and that is our mayor, Sierra. Northampton belongs to Mayors for Peace. We're part of an organization that is determined and dedicated to stopping wars and speaking out for peace. You don't need a resolution, Mayor Sarah. You don't need anything. You only need to get your moral courage and to step out and make a statement reflecting the sentiments of people here who have come out to plead to plead on the behalf, our own behalf, on the behalf of our children. You're the chair of the school committee. This makes it even more important that you speak out. I urge you to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on Zoom is Shar Nim. Yes, go ahead. Your name and city or town, please. Hi, my name is Shar. I'm a North Carolina resident. I live near the cemetery. I am an educator and resonate agitatedly with everyone else who has called for steps toward a free Palestine tonight. I've noticed that there have been actions by pro ceasefire groups that have protested against the weapons manufacturer Elder Harris, who employs many Northampton residents. Earlier, it was said that the war in Gaza was not deemed an emergency, and the resolution was taken off the agenda tonight after consulting with the lawyer, as others have mentioned. So for the public record, I just want to ask, does L3 Harris employing Northampton residents sway the decision to determine the genocide in Gaza does not constitute as an emergency for a ceasefire? Does everyone in the room know that for- It's eight o'clock. Apologies, that was my laptop. <laughs> Does everyone in the room know that for 2024, last I checked, and this is public information, that the projected sales for L3 Harris was around $21 billion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Follow and the money. As Emma pointed to earlier, we have a direct impact to what is happening, to the ethnic cleansing right now. It is not just decisions of our government. We have a very direct impact and role. 
So I ask again, does Elder Harris employing Northampton residents sway your decision to consider this not an emergency? Thank you. Um, next is Christine Andrews. Hi, uh, my name is Christine Andrews. I uh, live in Florence on Oak Street. Uh, I want to thank uh, Councillor Jerry Jeremy Dobbs for sponsoring this resolution. I'm really grateful to you, and I'm also really grateful for the support in our community for this resolution too and my heart sank when I came into the room and heard that you're not going to be voting on it tonight. Um, I believe that this inaction on this issue is unacceptable by our elected officials. I'm extremely disappointed. Inaction is support for the ongoing violence and genocide, and it makes it clear where you all stand. And it will affect my vote. As others have said, 29,000 people, it has been documented that 29,000 people have died. We know that more have. That's the population, uh, size of the population of Northampton. 62 of those people are members of my daughter-in-law's family, okay? 62 members of the Sakala family. This conflict does affect people in your community. I've traveled to the West Bank three times to visit family. I haven't been able to visit to Gaza, neither have they because of travel restrictions. But I've visited there three times before October 7th. And I have observed every time that I went worsening conditions for people who are experiencing life under a military occupation. Generation after generation of life under a military occupation. The news that I get from Gaza and from the West Bank comes from family members and it comes from the community of my family members. I also follow the news there and if you haven't been, I urge you to, I urge you to listen to Palestinians so that you know from them what they are experiencing. Most recently, my uh, daughter-in-law's three-year-old nephew was telling her on, on the phone about um, the, uh, his preschool getting evacuated because the army nearby was coming and raiding their town. And this is in the West Bank. OK, this is in the West Bank, not in Gaza. Um, who are we if we can't say out loud on the record that we support a ceasefire in an aggression that has the highest rate of death of any current world conflict where people are facing imminent death by bombardment, sniping, starvation, and disease, something that every major humanitarian organization has agreed on. Okay, and why is it important for Northampton to make this resolution? It's important because as liberals, as Democrats, we must send a message to our elected officials. Where are elect our elected officials on this issue? Why aren't we negotiating for peace right now? Our town needs to support that. We need to be part of that voice and we need to send a very clear message to our elected officials that we do not support this. So that was so time, if you could finish your Make sentence. a statement tonight as individuals. Tell us where you stand. Reconsider your decision not to vote on this and free Palestine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Dubs. <laughs> now, next on Zoom is Nate Watson. Hello, uh, Nate Watson, Ward 3, Northampton. I'll, I'll keep it short. Um, just saying I'm another Jewish community member supporting the ceasefire and hope we can uh, get it together. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Next in the room is Kat Alonzo Bodziak. Hello. 
somebody help me hold my pants up. They keep falling down. I am autistic and came in here with a completely different agenda. But being Native American and autistic, I decided to share on some of the public comments. I grew up into poverty and homelessness, and I was subjected to extreme violence throughout my life. And um, I feel kind of conflicted because I support your agenda, but like I'm also like coming from that, a white privileged place. And I'm Native American, and like I just hear so many people with light skin just talking about all these things while they go home to live in their safe houses. While I grew up on the streets experiencing extreme violence, and like unless you are in that place, you cannot completely empathize with what that person is going through. Yes, I wish Pal Israel and Palestine have been in conflict for thousands of years. Disarm Israel. Disarm Israel. Well, I mean, Israel's been in conflict with Palestine for thousands of years. No, no, no. Not true. Well, you. <laughs> well, no, I mean, biblically. No, no, not no. true. Not true. Let, uh, yeah, let's let let the person who has the floor According speak. According to what I read in the Bible, there was all kinds of wars, 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 wars over the same piece of land. Anyways, but anyways, like I don't, my Native American family history is gone because of genocide. So I don't want to support Israel in this conflict and that's what I'm saying like I don't have my facts right you can educate me later about the history but like all I know is like I hate violence and I'm so sad and heartbroken over this and like just like everyone but like I'm not um I'm not a white person I look white but I'm not <laughs> and like I just feel like it's I when I go home I'm gonna still be poor and Native American and like so people who have privilege and white privilege keep going keep doing what you're doing because you're gonna make a difference and I just appreciate Alex and Rachel Mayori I have a big love for you and like keep going support the City Council they can't solve the problems of the world but just they can hear you and s hopefully we can do something about this yeah. Next is Vicki Elson. Well, everything I was, uh, oh, my name is Vicki Elson. I live on Gleason Road in Northampton. Hello. Um, everything I was going to say has been said much more eloquently than I could have said it myself about Gaza and Israel. So um, I'm not going to use my whole two minutes. I just want to add one more piece of the puzzle, which is that this war is escalating. It's spreading. And, you know, the, the war, uh, the Ukraine war also has a great danger of, of escalating and spreading. And there are weapons on this planet that could make this global issue very, very local in a heartbeat. And if your lawyer doesn't see that what happens halfway across the world could wipe us all out in the next 10 minutes, yes. then you need a new lawyer. Yes. <laughs> so please, please support this resolution. Thank you. Next is Timon Wallace. Hi, my name is Tim and Wallace. I live on Gleason Road in Northampton, and um, I also um, you've heard you've heard all the, all the all the statements. I think you know how the community feels about this issue, and um, as as uh, Vicky said, you know maybe you need a new lawyer. But I mean, the the um, the emergency, you know, the fact I, I'm I'm. Uh, 
not, I don't know what the word is, not disappointed, but um, ashamed, I'm ashamed of Northampton not being able to make a statement like this when so many other towns and cities around the, around the state, around the world, around this country have already done so. This has been going on for months now. And, um, you know, I, I trust Northampton as a city that does take a stand on these things. I don't know why you can't do that in the timely manner that's, that's required. Uh, I think, you know, delaying things over over and over again is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a statement. It's a statement, as someone has said already, um, you know, not speaking out is a statement of, uh, of lack, a lack of a statement. So I hope you will do the right thing. Um, I, you can hear what the community is asking for, so I hope you will do it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there, have more people signed up up at the podium. Yeah. Could, could someone bring me that sheet? Okay, I think it's... Oh, maybe. Uh, so next is Alex Khan. Is Alex Khan here? Okay. Um, Benjamin Spencer. Uh, Farah. Hi. Uh, my name is Farah Evanson, Asi Evanson. I live on Lyman Road in Northampton. Um, first, I want to share with you all an incident that happened to me in the town very quickly. Um, I was with my son a few days ago. We were both wearing our kafis, waiting in line to go into a restaurant. Two women walked by us and called us a terrorist and an anti-Semite in front of my son. Thankfully, thankfully, the restaurant handled it beautifully and set an example for my son. And one of the reasons why I moved to Northampton is because I wanted to raise him in a place like Northampton. So that's first of all. Next, I want to say that it feels very dystopian to be begging for a city council to say the words ceasefire. It feels very weird. When 30,000 people have been massacred, and just to put this in perspective for you all, that's 10 times the casualties of the horrific attack on 9-11. 10 times, just so you understand. 10 times. Israel has dropped the equivalent of two and a half nuclear bombs on a land 139 square miles, the size of the city of Philadelphia. Two and a half nuclear bombs. Just think about that and think about the effect it has on the environment if we want to go that route. Over 12,000 children have been massacred. Children are having amputations without anesthesia. Children are being made orphans by the tens of thousands. Children are being starved because aid trucks are being denied entry into Gaza. Children are having heart attacks from fear. An entire generation of surviving children will grow up with extreme and lasting traumas. Those children will become adults with extreme and lasting traumas. If we don't speak up and take a stand, we are being complicit in a genocide. Yes. We cannot say we didn't know. We are watching it live. And if you all are not watching it, I can send you some links to watch it. <laughs> this will that be in time. the history books. So if you could finish Just remember yourself. that. This will be in the history books. Thank you. Next is Mona Shadi. Can you hear me? Yeah, that, that just goes out over Zoom, so okay. there's no amplification in the room. All right. Mona Shadi, I live in East Hampton. I am several things. I'm a proud Egyptian Arab woman, and I am also a very proud lifelong resident of Western Massachusetts. 
I thought it might be helpful, after all the amazing comments here tonight, to see if I could. Thank you so much. Bring this home for everybody. One thing that I am not is a parent, but I do love children. And I think each and every one of you would say that you love and care for children. Today, almost 30,000 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza and the West Bank, with tens upon tens of thousands injured, over one million forcibly displaced, and thousands more dead or dying as we speak under rubble. 12,000 Palestinian children have been killed by Israel. To put that in perspective, that is more than all of the children who attend Northampton, West Springfield, and Holyoke school districts. Over 17,000 kids in Gaza are unaccompanied, which is a polite way of saying they are separated from their families, their relatives cannot be located, or have all been killed. 17,000 children. That is the equivalent of every single child in pre-K to senior year in Northampton, Greenfield, West Springfield, Holyoke, East Hampton, South Hadley, and Hadley School Districts. And I am, that does not count the toddlers, infants, and newborns, as I am counting school-age children. That means that there are over 28,000 Gazan children who are alone, injured, dead, or dying as I speak, or if you prefer, roughly two-thirds of the 46,169 children who attend school in the city of Boston. If this does not move you to say cease fire, if this does not move you to use this chamber in order to call for something as simple as the sanctity the striving to save but one of these lives. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go home, and we will tell everybody in our community so that, that the was town time council if you could finish wants yourself. to wait until March 7th, which means the town council wants to wait for the deaths of roughly 2,100 more children before calling for a ceasefire. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Charlotte Kaling. Hello, my name is Charlotte Kaling, and I'm a resident of Elm Street in Northampton. So I am here, like so many other members of my community tonight, to ask um, that you please vote on a ceasefire resolution here in Northampton. Um, I don't know if we all need to wave our arms around a little bit to get that back on. But um, so I learned of this vote today, um, and I showed up tonight. And I am extremely disappointed to hear that it is no longer on the agenda for this evening. Um, and I, forth I first want to say that I will definitely be here the next time you decide to deign to discuss this issue, though I hope at the end of this evening you decide to call for a ceasefire, which is the right thing to do. But I know I will be here. I know all of these wonderful people will be here whenever you put it next on the agenda, because we will not stop calling for a ceasefire. Um, Shut it down. I am a nursing student currently. I have worked in healthcare for years. Um, I am a new member of the newly formed Healthcare Workers for Palestine. And I, I think you have heard so many stories tonight about the despicable conditions of all the people in Palestine and in Gaza. And the conditions of healthcare and healthcare workers is incomprehensible. And as someone going into the healthcare field, it rocks me to my core that our government could fund such atrocities and hurt so many people. It is hard to not feel my words getting discombobulated as I'm trying to speak about this, because there is so much that is so harmful that our dollars are contributing to, and that your inaction is contributing to. I, I plead that you please consider taking action on this issue immediately. And while we are talking about Palestine tonight, let us not forget that the US also funds imperialism and destruction across the world. Like 
um, Sudan right now and the Congo. And we cannot ignore these issues when we can only choose to focus on Ukraine instead of Palestine, when we only choose to focus on white people instead of brown people and black people and indigenous people. We need to speak for everyone and as a white woman. That, that was is so time, important. So you could finish your sentence. Of course. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for being here. Please use your position of power to call for a ceasefire now. Free Palestine. Um, so I'm not sure if this is from a previous week's, but Jenny Fleming Ives. No. That's from another. Selena uh, Delacroce. Hi, my name is Selena Steen Della Croce, and I live in Leeds, Massachusetts on Main Street. I wasn't going to say anything because I actually don't know what else is left to say. I think that hearing the voices of children, Hind, I wrote something but forget it. There was a six-year-old girl named Hind who was trapped in a car surrounded by her dead relatives who called for help for the Red Crescent. And the Red Crescent negotiated a deal so that the two ambulance workers and an ambulance could go and save her. And they went missing because the state of Israel bombed the ambulance. My partner, I shouldn't, he's not here right now, but he's, he works in an ambulance. And it's hard to imagine what it's like for ambulance workers in Gaza right now. And it's hard to imagine how this town and this country can be okay with what's happening. The city of Northampton according to the 2021 census, had 29,311 residents. Since October 7th, 28,663 people in Gaza have been murdered with our tax dollars. 68,395 have been wounded. That means that three Northamptons have been killed or wounded since October 7th, which is not very long. Within one month after October 7th, Israel, with our tax dollars, had dropped a higher tonnage of explosives on Gaza than the combined weight of the two bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, within one month. We're in February. I took my dog on a walk today, because I live next to the Mill River, which Rachel knows. Rachel's my council person. <laughs> and as, when I was looking, when I was watching her drink out of the Mill River, I thought about the fact that my dog has cleaner drinking water than the, than the residents of Gaza, who are drinking water that's been contaminated by de de decomposing bodies that are left in rubble. That's not to mention all of the wells that have been, that have been filled by settlers, by Zionist state, and that we're funding this. And the woman, the Native American woman who is here was right that there are so many people living in poverty in this country. When you walk down the street in Northampton, you see people, I can't walk down the street for more than half a block without seeing someone no, eating, I'm sure, without seeing up. someone eating out of the trash can. So instead of, of attending to our own needs in Northampton, instead of making sure that people don't go home hungry, that people have somewhere to live, that they don't freeze to death, we're funding bombs in Gaza. And, and it is, this is an emergency. So I hope that, thank you, Councillor Dubbs, for, for putting this resolution forward. I hope that I'm wrapping up. I hope that, that this will be voted on today within the next 24 hours, because I can't think of anything else that's an, more of an emergency than this. Thank you. Uh, Paki Wieland. Hi, I, uh, I live in Greenfield, but I am a Northampton resident uh, emerita, uh, having lived here for 30 years. And a few years ago, my landlady died, so I had to move. But, um, and I, I love this city. And I have been here for so many resolutions that I feel like we could wallpaper my house with, it, with them. But today, um, I think the people who have brought this resolution to you have given you, each one of you, city councilors and you, the mayor, an opportunity to go on record on the right side of history, to go on record as people of conscience, to go on record speaking out for justice. And so many cities and, and 
countries don't even have that opportunity, but you do. And so rather than, I don't know how you, you feel about all you've heard tonight, and we've certainly heard a lot, that if your hearts haven't been moved, to see another doctor. But uh, the, this is an opportunity for you to be on the right side of history and to, to actually have an opportunity to, to let your consciences be moved and to vote the right way and to do something extraordinary. Yes. Change the rules. What, what are the rules? Because you don't even have to spend money on this. You know? <laughs> so, uh, so I implore you, do that and, uh, and make us all proud of you and, and make your children and grandchildren proud of you too. Thank you. Uh, next on Zoom is T.L. James. Hi, can folks hear me? Yes, yeah. your name and city or town, please. Yep, my name is Terrell and I live in Northampton. Um, <clears throat> I just, I, I don't have much to say other than the fact that I, I want to remind the members of this council that there's a genocide going on. And it is our responsibility as as people in this country to participate in shutting down the genocide. We have two options here. You either participate, you either take action against the genocide or you are complicit in the genocide. That's it. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. Everyone in this room, both Zoom and in person, is responsible for ending the genocide in Gaza. If you are a teacher, you're responsible for educating your students. If you are, if you are a doctor, you're responsible for taking care of our community when we're in need. If you're a counselor, you are responsible to pass a resolution calling for the ceasefire. The longer this we take, the longer we wait to, to pass the resolution, the longer you wait to pass the resolution, the more complicit you become in, in, the, in the deaths that are happening in Gaza. Between now and March 7th, if you wait that long to pass the resolution, you are complicit in all of the deaths that will occur in Gaza. We are asking you for a very simple thing, which is to which is to endorse and support this ceasefire call. That is not a, a, a monumental task. That is the bare minimum. There are people in this room who, who will do that in a heartbeat right now, mm -hmm. yep. if they were sitting in your position. They will do everything that they can to do that in a heartbeat right now. So I'm asking you to please pass the ceasefire. That's all we're asking you to do. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the room or Zoom who would like to speak? Come on up. Hi, um, my name is David Ames from Northampton. Um, I wrote this earlier today, and I know that uh, it may be a little incomplete. Um, but what happened in Israel on October 7th was a hor horrific act of terrorism. But what's happening in Gaza right now is inhumane and barbaric. I can't talk to Anthony Blinken, Joe Biden, or Benjamin Netanyahu, but I can now speak to you, uh, my local government. I urge you to do the right thing and start um, and support a ceasefire um, resolution now. So, <laughs> ceasefire. Welcome. Hi, um, my name is Kristen Straley. I live on Manahan Street and um, with this wonderful person. And um, uh, thank you so much for representing us. I would like to say that I am a very proud member of the Western Massachusetts Area Labor Federation. And <laughs> we had our ceasefire resolution vote on November 13th, and that, and that felt too late. Yeah. It, felt, it felt so late, but it was so easy. It took about two minutes for us to pass a resolution, and I really sincerely hope that you find yourselves um, and, and talk about this with us. I, I, it really has been unanimous, and this has been such a powerful space to be in. Um, 
so many of us are grieving, especially those of us who are working in the movement. Um, it, it is so hard to open your phone and, and understand how many infants can fit on a stretcher. We, we, don't wanna, we, we don't wanna be part of that and we are asking you to move. We need you to move. And I, it, I'm telling you, it is so easy to pass this resolution and I'm glad to be in the company of such amazing activists and neighbors um, who, who are showing us how to do this work. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. I really hope that other people um, have a chance to speak as well. But um, yeah, it's not, it's not hard to do. Find your backbones, please. <laughs> Jennifer Scarlett, Northampton. Um, yeah, please do find your backbones as quickly as possible, as in tonight. Um, I thank Kristen for pointing out that it would take you a couple minutes to do something obvious that won't cost you any money. I notice that the mayor does not have the courtesy of looking at the people who are speaking. That's noted, noted. Um, I thank Congress uh, Council Member uh, Dubs, and I really appreciate the fact that you represent me. Yes. So we need a ceasefire immediately. It's a no-brainer. If you're wondering whether there's a genocide going on, look at the look at the cultural genocide. If nothing else, the libraries, the mosques, the schools, the museums, the UNESCO monuments. I mean, you know, setting aside all the healthcare workers and the schools and the refugee camps and the you know. Are you really still debating this in your hearts and minds? So please do the right thing and let's do it tonight. Thank you. I'm sorry? I'm gonna go to someone on Zoom. Oh, okay. Uh, and then, then you can go after. Uh, so Shelby. Hello, can you hear, hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is Donovan Lee, uh, and I just wanted to echo all the calls for uh, immediate ceasefire and you guys passing the ceasefire resolution immediately and urgently because it is the most critical emergency happening. Uh, and I also want to say you guys also need to take immediate action to cut your ties with Motorola. You currently have a contract to have police dash cams through Motorola. They fund and supply Israel with surveillance tech, radios, and communications equipment. Uh, so you guys need to stop giving them more money to kill more Palestinian people. Uh, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. My name is Jonah. I live here in Northampton, and uh, I wasn't going to speak tonight. I've never come to a council meeting, but I just couldn't not. Um, I do want to echo everybody and say that uh, everyone here on the council needs to push for a ceasefire resolution. and from just a personal selfish financial standpoint these are my tax dollars that i do not get a direct say i mean this is my representation but if nothing happens after tonight i will know that you know we are not represented and that is just one aspect of of you know the situation here that that's just one very localized aspect of you know a much bigger system than ourselves but yeah I it is inconscionable for anybody here to do nothing in the face of what's happening especially something as easy as a ceasefire resolution thank you Thank you. Uh, next is Rory on Zoom. Hi, um, my name is Rory Cronin. I'm a resident of Northampton, Ward 3. I'm here to demand that the council vote to support an immediate ceasefire, um, as you've already heard tonight. Um, as a queer, and more importantly, a human, I think right now it's important to recognize um, those who are being oppressed. This isn't a time to reflect on our differences. Um, it's a time to consider what makes us human. 
uh, what is happening in Palestine and Gaza is not human. There's no question anymore that what is happening in Palestine and Gaza is oppression, is genocide. The very, very minimum right now is to demand a ceasefire. Um, it's shameful that we've taken this off the bill tonight, and I demand that it should be piped back on very soon. Um, thank you, Free Palestine. Uh, we can do three more. We have time in public comment for three more people. My name is Zane, and I am 11 years old. Woo! And my mom, Woo! my mom, also spoke. So I just wanted to give a little words about Palestine. Ceasefire for my generation, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also, I just want to remind all of you that there are children under the rubble, and their arms and legs are off. How can you not cease fire after hearing? all these amazing people speaking for Palestine. Okay? Free Palestine. Yes. Woo! Next on Zoom is Mega Deepa. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, yeah. my name is Meg Kutipa Maiti. I'm actually calling from Holyoke. I've lived in the Pine Valley for 10 years, including as a North Hampton resident, as a five college student who attended classes and worked in a research lab at Smith College for years. I want to speak to how much cognitive dissonance I'm experiencing as a South Asian immigrant when I hear this council insinuate that your statement and this resolution doesn't feel relevant. I know the language our elected officials use makes a difference because of how much more dangerous it's become to live here as BIPOC since the 2016 presidential election. The racist and xenophobic incidents I experienced in downtown Northampton just between January and September of last year cut out my access to critical health care as a disabled person. And it says a lot when a pharmacist at the CVS on King Street where I've been picking up the same control medication for nearly a decade, feels able to call the entire fleet of North Kansas police department on a customer. It doesn't matter that I was going into withdrawal from prescribed medications because I don't own an American passport. It says a lot more when the same person feels able to treat you the same way several months later, even when you show up with a federally issued ID. Around the same time, another immigrant was a victim of extremely publicized police violence just down the same street on King Street. I'm sure all of you saw those videos. This was the reality of Northampton before October 7th. And it will get worse the more you embolden the racist legacy of this town through your inaction. Yesterday, our senator, Elizabeth Warren, made a Valentine's Day post on Instagram talking about, and I quote, healthcare as a basic human right. And I found that extremely offensive because I know that human right wasn't afforded to me in Northampton. I know that I have PTSD and still um, sometimes try to avoid going to pick up my own medications without having a white person with me. And I know that this healthcare as a human right sure as fuck doesn't apply to Gaza, where the last functioning hospital in the strip is being decimated as we speak. Um, that's all I'm going to say. See you now. Call for a resolution. This seems really obvious. And if anyone's interested, I've reported both incidents that happened to me. So. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one more person. Hi, uh, my name is Nico Latondra Cahillain. Um, I live in Northampton, and I'm not going to go into detail, but you know, just ceasefire. Come on, ceasefire now.
this.
Supporting Genesis!